Hello viewers, welcome to Tech Study Cell. In this video, we will discuss how the capacitor work in AC and DC circuit. We will see the construction of AC and DC capacitor practically. We will observe the charging and discharging period of a capacitor practically with the help of simple DC circuit. And at last, we will check the capacitor without the help of a multimeter. Now, we all know this is the electrolytic capacitor which work only in DC circuit and these are the AC capacitor which work in both AC and DC. Now if you want to see the construction of this electrolytic capacitor you will see a plastic cover on the top. If I remove the plastic cover we will find a metal cover after removing the metal cover you will find the both plate and the insulating material now here you can see this plate is connected with the negative terminal the outside plate again there is a insulating material in between and this plate is connected to positive terminal thus we can see the both plate of a capacitor and a insulating material between the plates now we can compare the construction of this capacitor with this model here two plate these are the two plate and our insulating material is in between the two plate thus form a capacitor now looking at this diagram you will see these are the two plate of the capacitor and a insulation is between them so these are electrically separated and a battery is here which is not connected with this plate now we have already seen in a practical capacitor that there is two plate and insulation is between them. So same I have shown in this diagram. Now if I connect the negative terminal of the battery with this plate, what will happen? By connecting the negative terminal, some electron will try to flow in this plate but the electron present in this plate will repel those electron thus no flow of electron will occur by connecting the negative terminal with this plate now what will happen if I connect the positive terminal of the battery with the other plate Previously, I have just connected the negative terminal with this plate. I have not connected the positive terminal with this plate. Now, I am connecting the positive terminal of the battery with this plate. Now, this positive terminal will attract the electron present in this plate. For that, some of the electron present in this plate will attracted by the positive terminal and it will flow to terminal after that you will see this plate will be positively charged and this positively charged plate will attract the electron of this 
plate which is connected to negative terminal. This attraction force will again cause the electron flow in this plate. What will happen? As the negative terminal is connected with this plate and an attraction force is present between these two plates which will again cause a flow of electron in this plate and some of the electron from the negative terminal will inject into this plate. Now at this scenario you can see the more electron is present in this plate than positive charge and for this plate the more positive charge is present than electron so this is a positively charged plate and this is negatively charged plate now if we remove the battery or if we disconnect the battery from the capacitor you will see this plate will still hold a negative charge and this plate will be positively charged thus the capacitor work in a DC circuit now if we increase the size of a plate it will hold more electron so it will be more negatively charged and it will hold more positive charge so it will be more positively charged thus capacitance also increase by increasing the size of this plate now we will measure the capacitance for this capacitor which I have already dismantled you will find the reading 2.4 now as I have told you if I increase the size of a plate the capacitance will increase and if I decrease the size of a plate capacitance will decrease now I am going to do that I want to decrease the size of a plate let's see what will happen now you can see I have reduced the length of this plate and the capacitance decreased to 0.79 microfarad thus we have seen the greater area of a plate it can hold more charge so capacitance will increase as we reduce the area of a plate capacitance will decrease now another important thing is voltage now here you can see these three electrolytic capacitor all have rating of 100 microfarad you can see here the rating is 100 microfarad which and for this capacitor permissible voltage is 160 volt again you can see the size of this capacitor much lower than this one but the capacitance value is again for this capacitor is 100 microfarad but the voltage is 35 volt previously which is 160 volt so again for this capacitor is also 100 microfarad but voltage is 16 volt.
so we have seen that if we increase the permissible voltage for the same capacitance the size of a capacitor increase as you have to provide a better insulation for higher voltage for that the size of a capacitor increase as we increase the permissible voltage now we'll come to ac capacitor now these are the ac capacitor now what are the difference between ac and dc capacitor first this ac capacitor can work in both ac and dc but for this electrolytic capacitor which we have seen just now can work only in dc circuit now for dc source the voltage or amplitude of a for voltage is constant with time but for ac source the amplitude or the direction of a current is not constant it changing with the time for this time for this time period this is positive and again after certain period it will cross the zero this is a zero line after certain time it will be negative so the amplitude is changing thus the direction of a current is also changing with the time in ac supply now if i connect the ac source with this capacitor what will happen this is the ac source i am connecting with this capacitor let assume previously this is a positive terminal and this is a negative terminal as we can see it in the waveform but after certain time the terminal will reverse this will be negative terminal and this will be positive terminal so for the ac supply this both plate of a capacitor will charge and discharge frequently according to the frequency of a supply as this is a negative terminal now so this plate is negatively charged as more electron is present in this plate after certain time this plate will be negatively charged and this will be positively charged again this plate will negatively charge and after certain time this plate will be positively charged thus the both plate of a capacitor will charge discharge according to the frequency of a ac source so the ac current can flow through the capacitor but the capacitor can block the dc current now what are the different in construction of ac and dc capacitor as we have seen already the dc capacitor construction now we will see the construction of ac capacitor now this is the ac capacitor you can see here this are the two plate and a coating of insulating material is given if i remove the insulating cover you will find the same thing two plate and a insulating material between them let me show you again here is a insulating material but here you can see the two plate and a insulating material between them is this one so we have seen the construction of ac capacitor as for ac capacitor there is no polarity 
so positive negative terminal is not present so these two lead is connected with these two plate or foil and as the capacitor is charging discharging very frequently so here different type of insulating material is used which can withstand this fast charging and discharging period this is the main difference in construction of AC and DC capacitor here the insulating material provided for DC capacitor it not withstand the frequent charge and discharge it will generate a large amount heat which can damage the capacitor but for the AC capacitor this insulating material can withstand the frequent charge and discharging thus we have seen the construction of this capacitor this is another type of AC capacitor having same type of construction you can see here after removing the plastic cover you will find these two terminal and two aluminium foil is present which is connected with these two terminal and an insulating material is present in between and for the ceramic capacitor the construction is two plate is there and in between them a ceramic disc is present these are the two plate having two leads and as this is a AC capacitor no positive and negative terminal and this is a ceramic disc now what we have discussed in the theory we will observe it practically with the help of this simple circuit in this circuit a DC voltage is applied which is 17 volt in this case there is a variable resistance in the series a ammeter to check the current flowing through the circuit a voltmeter to measure the voltage across the capacitor during charging and discharging period and this is a 4700 microfarad capacitor now for this DC source this should be a positive terminal and this should be a negative terminal this same circuit is implemented on this vero board this is a trimmer which will act as a variable resistance which I have shown in this circuit diagram I have used this multimeter as ammeter is connected in series as shown in this circuit and this will act as a voltmeter it is connected across the capacitor you can see here and this is the capacitor now I am going to connect the DC source to this circuit you can see the ammeter and voltmeter reading in this two multimeter and during charging period I can control the charging period with this variable resistance I have connected the positive terminal of the battery to positive terminal of the capacitor so direction of the current should be in this way so it will show the positive value in the ammeter for this direction of the current now I am going to connect the DC power supply to this circuit you can see the reading is positive and voltage is slowly increasing I can increase the charging period by increasing the resistance now you can see here the capacitor is charging very slow rate as I have increased the resistance 
now if I decrease the resistance you can see it will charging in faster rate as it is fully charged the value of the current is going to zero now the capacitor is fully charged looking at this voltage 18.5 across the capacitor I can say that capacitor is fully charged and you can see here now no current is flowing through this circuit as this capacitor is fully charged now I am going to disconnect the power supply I have disconnect the power supply you can see here I have used this LED which will be act as a load during discharging period and you can see the voltage across the capacitor as the capacitor is fully charged though I have disconnect the power supply now during discharging period I have removed the power supply and I will connect the load across the circuit during discharging period the current will flow from capacitor to load so the direction of the current should be in this way which is opposite to charging period so will observe a negative value in this ammeter during discharging period and the voltage will reduce to zero and again I can control the discharging period with this variable register now I am connecting the load Now you can see the brightness of the LED is high as the voltage is reducing and you can observe the negative value showing in the ammeter as the opposite direction of the current. Now the brightness is slowly reducing as the voltage value is reducing after certain time you can barely see the LED is glowing and the current is reduced to almost zero and this voltage is not sufficient to glow this LED now we can say the capacitor is totally discharged now we have observed practically what will happen during charging and discharging of the capacitor now I am going to show you how to check a capacitor without the help of a multimeter for that you just need a capacitor which you want to check and a DC power source you can use any 9 volt battery instead of power source also so I am using a 17 volt power source to show you the process it is a very easy process before charging the capacitor you have to check the voltage permissible voltage written on this capacitor in this case it is written 25 volt so I can charge this capacitor up to 25 volt not more than that so I am using a DC source I have given enough time to charge the capacitor now if it is ok it is fully charged now you have to discharge the capacitor to discharge it you just need a piece of metal here I am using a scissor next you have to connect the two terminal of the capacitor to that metal piece you have observed the spark which indicate previously capacitor was charged 
after connecting or shorting these two terminal with the metal piece it is discharged so this capacitor is okay i am showing you the process again i have connected the positive terminal of the capacitor to positive terminal of the battery i have connected the negative terminal of the capacitor to negative terminal of the battery now it is fully charged to 17 volt if it is okay then i have to discharge it to check it whether it is charged or not for that i am shorting these two positive and negative terminal with this metal you have seen the spark so this capacitor is okay and another point to check a capacitor without using multimeter is you can see several capacitor is mounted on this PCB but please concentrate on this capacitor you can observe a inflated surface on the top if this is a capacitor the surface is not flat it is inflated this type so which indicate that capacitor is suffering due to high temperature that capacitor is not in good condition uh, you can see the surface is not plain it is inflated you can compare it with the good one you can see that surface is plain but in this case surface is inflated looking at this two point you can check whether the capacitor is ok or not if i want to replace this old capacitor with the new one i have to observe the three parameter first is capacitance value in this case 3.3 .3 microfarad next the permissible voltage in this case 450 volt and third one is the permissible temperature in this case 105 degree centigrade the new capacitor should have the same capacitance value in this case 3.3 .3 microfarad should have greater or same permissible voltage but not lower than 450 in this case it is 450 written here so new capacitor should have 450 volt or greater than 450 volt and the permissible temperature should be above 105 degree centigrade or you can use the capacitor having same temperature rating that is 105 these three points you have to remember before replacing any capacitor if you think the video is helpful to you please hit a like button and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe take study cell for more such videos thank you